Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Right, today I am going to do a puzzle by a brand I've never done before. I'm going to do a treffle puzzle. So the few shops that actually sell puzzles near where I live in Stirling uh, do actually stock treffle puzzles. So I took myself off to a local toy store and I found some treffle puzzles uh, that I really like. There were some really cool, lovely, fun images um, and I actually ended up coming away with two and I'm going to show you both just now but I'm only going to build one in today's video so the first one I'm going to show you is this one this appears to be a line of puzzles called Funny Cities and there were a couple of others in the shop as well but I particularly like this one because it's New York City and it's being overrun by cats and I just thought it just says it all really about the personality of cats and how you know, they think they own everything and <laughs> generally kind of get in the way and sit on stuff when you're trying to do them, just like puzzles. So, and it reminded me a lot of Grace. And funnily enough, I was actually doing a wee video of uh, this puzzle to send to a friend to show them. And as I was trying to film it, uh, the cat ended up stepping onto the box and just completely obscuring the image. So, you know, as I said, very reflective of the personality of cats, or at the very least, my cat anyway. So I just thought this was a really fun image and I'd like to do this one at some point. But I'm not going to do this one today. The one I am going to do today is this one here. This one is a gradient puzzle and it's just called gradient but it isn't a gradient in the normal sense. It's not just colours blending into one another. There are obviously colours and they do blend to a certain extent but there's actually shapes in this puzzle. Uh, so I'll show you a close-up picture but what what's really happening in the image is you've got lots of long kind of I don't know, cuboid type shapes emanating out from the middle and they're kind of popping out towards you and um, they're all different colours as you go around the puzzle and there's little sort of squares on the end of these these big cuboids for want of a better word and the squares are slightly different colours as well so it's just a, bit of a gradient with a bit of a difference really and I really did like that about it I was also really drawn to the colours so vibrant and vivid and I like the fact that it goes through the whole rainbow of colours starting with the red up here and all the way around to purple and pinks down here so you know there's a, there's a full kind of spectrum of colour here to work on and I just thought it looked lovely and I thought that I would work on this one for you today so without further ado I am just going to dive into this box and open up the pieces and we'll see what we can see right so let's get this box opened up now first I'm gonna to have to take off the cellophane wrap so now then, I recently cut my nails, so <laughs> I now have nothing with which to tear open this cellophane. Ah, did it. Did it. So the colours on the image, the box image of this puzzle, are really bright and vibrant. Like, they're lovely. I hope that that is the same on the pieces themselves. Right, so it's a nice feel on the box. It's kind of a woven sort of finish to it. Feels quite thick. It's a, well, it's a full image essentially, apart from the tiny wee bit that's cut off with the treffle logo there. There is a smaller uh, full image on the side, but I'm not sure if there's a poster inside. I'll need to have a look. But, I mean, that's fine. It's a gradient. I don't think that's going to be a huge issue really. Um, having just that tiny bit obscured but it, the box feels nice anyway and it feels like nice sturdy cardboard so I'm just going to take the lid off pop that to the side there so yeah no poster we've got well quite a small bag of pieces although maybe it just looks small because the box is quite large <laughs> it seems a little seems a little overkill really the size of the box for um, the size of the pieces but then again I'm not going to complain about that because I do use bo the boxes for pieces and sorting pieces and things like that so you know I do make use of a large size box so I won't complain about that but you know the box is significantly bigger than the bag um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the bag and I'm going to pour the pieces out into the box and we'll have a little rummage and see what we can see bit of dust inside the bag. can't really tell if it's, there's going to be huge dust problems yet but we'll see. So I'll just have a quick rummage first and the 
pieces look to be nice and bright, just as bright as the box image. And they look to be quite matte as well. Yeah, they are. Got a similar kind of woven finish to the piece, which I am so pleased about. I do like a piece like that. I'll show you that close up as well. But uh, yeah, pleased um, about the finish on these pieces. They look quite small, these pieces do. Just another first impression looking at them. They look fairly small, these pieces. I mean, the last puzzle I did was an Anatolian. They were slightly on the larger side. I'd say these are slightly smaller than average. And they feel fairly sturdy, although they appear thinnish to me. But they do feel sturdy. Maybe it's just because they're small. Um, but, you know, I don't see any pieces stuck together. The image quality looks to be really nice. I'll know better once I've sorted them, but I can't really... Oh, there's one stuck together there. But that's not, um, oh, it's just very slightly st still not cut through. That's an edge. Not sure if I'll find other edge pieces like that. But I'll, I'll know more whether there's a lot of stuck together pieces once I've sorted them. There doesn't look to be at the moment, just at first glance. And the image quality looks really good. It's just the usual blue kind of cardboard backing on them. Quite, like, not only do the pieces look small, but the, the prongs and also the inserts look small as well. So overall, I just I just get a kind of feel of, of them being slightly smaller than average, these pieces. But uh, that's fine, that's not an issue. So I am going to sort this puzzle with it being a gradient. That's probably the easiest way to go. But um, just a wee quick word on a different variety of shapes. We've got edges, obviously. Um, and we've got all the usual standard shapes. Three ins, one out there. Two ins and two outs on adjacent sides. We've got a little castle one there with three outs and one in. We've got four outs. And have we got one with four ins? I thought I spotted one. Plenty with three ins. Not spotted one with other. Ah, yeah, got one with four ends as well. Um, and we've, we've obviously got the, the standard two ends and two outs on opposite sides as well. So they've got a slightly elongated look to them as well. Not exactly square uh, like these ones, for example. The, the you know the standard shapes. They look quite long. So I don't know if I'll be able to get an idea of um, sort of portrait or landscape, kind of vertical or horizontal orientation with these pieces or not. But I don't really feel like this puzzle is going to be so difficult that I need to start using things like that or necessarily shape sorting. But it's interesting to sort of know which way they'll align. But uh, yeah, I mean, first first impressions, these pieces look to be really quite good. So I'm looking forward to getting started on this. So I'm going to just sort away just now and I will, yeah, start building this really pretty gradient puzzle. Hope you enjoy. Okay, the sorting is done, and what I've done is I've sorted by colour, obviously, with a gradient. That's the most obvious thing to do. I haven't bothered separating out the edges. I'm not sure why, really. I just I just chucked them all in the colour piles. I don't think it really matters if I don't do the edge first on this one, because it's it kind of spirals out from the middle anyway. So, you know, it's maybe another nice puzzle that I could do just in segments a bit at a time, or perhaps grow in a little out from the middle. I'm not sure, but um, what I've done is I've placed them roughly where in the puzzle they go. Uh, because in the past when I've sorted for gradients, they've been a bit jumbled. <laughs> I've not necessarily put the colours in the right place and I've sort of shot myself in the foot a bit with it. So um, I've just followed 
the colours around and you can see on the box image that I'm sort of mostly mostly there so that's how I've done it you've got kind of reds down here oranges yellows some sort of greeny yellows and more kind of green and you've got these bluey greens and blues darker blues purples and purpley pinks and that's how it goes so I've, that's you know the sorting it's pretty straightforward and obvious i do have a small pile here of pieces that have actually lots of different colors on them and i've separated those out because i think the reason for that is that they are in the center of the puzzle uh here where you've got like essentially four colors all in the one piece um beside each other in the puzzle so i think that they belong in the center and they stood out because they had such a lot of different colors in them these pieces here i just wanted to point this out um the only pieces i found stuck together were edges uh, like i said at the beginning i found those two edge pieces stuck together and it just looks as though they've not quite cut through properly but it's not you know none of the pieces have torn particularly but it's clear that they've just not cut right through the piece but that's it that's all i found none of the other pieces were stuck together what i did find were a couple of bent pieces and that is why i have uh, these pieces here that one's just a little bit bent on the corner that might be where one was stuck because that is an edge piece this one has one of these corners a little bit bent but i must admit with these pieces where it's four ins all of those pieces of that shape were really quite tiny and if you look the piece of card between the two inserts is really small like and i was really quite careful how i handled those so i was afraid i was going to bend them whilst i was sorting so these pieces do feel a little delicate and obviously that one's got a little bit bent somewhere along the line i also found a few where the prongs were bent you can see that one there that one is a little bit peeling and that one's another bent prong there so not many but disappointing when they're kind of bent out of shape like that and they're not really an issue but i just thought i'd point out that out of the few that were stuck together they were all edge pieces so that wasn't like a problem really but otherwise these pieces seem fine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start building the puzzle and i'm just going to follow the rainbow with this so i'm going to start with red here and i'm going to move around hopefully not stumble too much on the greens because i generally tend to slow down when i reach green in a gradient puzzle not sure why but it's just the way my eyes are i guess and then moving around into the blues and purples and back around to red again so that's how i'm going to build it and yeah, I, I, I really hope you enjoy. Okay, so I've put together most of the pile of red pieces that I had. First impressions though, I just wanted to say, like I've been, since I opened this puzzle up, I've been trying to figure out whether these pieces are just a little bit on the small side or whether they're just kind of normal size pieces. And I think the answer to that is that they're a little bit of both. <laughs> like, so if you look at the, the pieces that I've put together so far, I'm hoping you can see here, there's no real sense of orientation. They do tend to be kind of long and thin, but then some of them are just are kind of fat. And I've noticed that, um, I've noticed that, like, if you look down the columns, like that line there is quite, the pieces are quite wide, but then that line next to it, they're quite narrow. And then the one next to that, they're a little bit wider and, so it's not they're not really kind of square and they're not really you know either horizontal or vertical necessarily i think it's, they're just a bit kind of i don't know I, th I just think some pieces are just really quite small um like like this one this looks really tiny like really squished together a lot of the pieces 
that I found with um, four ins. Now I'm just trying to actually find a piece that has that uh, here. So like this one that was slightly bent. I mean, they, they're really small, those pieces. And yet, you know, there's others that are just really chunky and quite square, like this kind of piece here. So um, I think it's a little bit of both. Some of these pieces do look a little bit on the small side, but then, you know, you'll have a few that look quite big and chunky. Um, so that was throwing me a bit, so I'm glad I've sort of figured that one out. Um, it's not as easy as a normal gradient, and the reason for that is because even though you've got colours blending into each other, you've got brighter reds beside dark reds because you've got these kind of like long um, cuboid type things coming out the way uh, with little squares on the end. Um, the squares can throw you off a bit because you might think that that colour is further over this way in the gradient, but it's actually it's actually nearer to the really dark bit. So depending on what's on the piece, sometimes it can be difficult to spot the piece. So it's definitely taking me longer than a normal gradient would, but it's not too difficult so far. But I think I'm ready now just to move on to the orange. I'm starting to touch a little bit of the pinks down here. A few of these have pinks in. So I will try and keep getting those in. But I just want to move across the top now to um, to the orange pieces. So this puzzle is coming together really nicely and the further I'm getting along the faster it's getting so I wasn't sure how it was going to be when I reached the greens because I typically do have a problem with greens but I actually found it fine. I probably I think found this orange into the yellow bit the easiest so far but because there's especially in these corners there's quite a lot of sort of dark contrasting against lighter colours and it creates these lines um, which helps me really to locate the piece that I'm looking for. So it's not, this puzzle isn't difficult and certainly as it goes along it's getting a lot easier. I mean I am still noticing some colours come a little easier so the oranges and yellows and then these turquoises, oh, these turquoises into the blues are starting to come together quite easily as well. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased. It's looking so gorgeous. What a lovely, lovely puzzle. And I'm just thoroughly enjoying it. I've not really had much to say in terms of strategy. I'm just, as I said, following the rainbow and going around the edge. The edges are coming together as I do the sections. So that's worked out fine. Sometimes I put a few edges in first and that gives me a little bit of a framework, but otherwise this puzzle is just so much fun to put together. It's just so, I don't know, it's, it's relaxing. Gradient puzzles are just relaxing to do. And it's easy to forget that I'm actually filming the puzzle. <laughs> I suddenly remember I'd better do a little bit of talking about my progress and what my process is and everything. So anyway, as I said, not much to it. Just following the rainbow, just putting the edges together, uh, putting the edge together on the next pile and then filling in the gaps and just doing each section as it comes. So I've just got the three left, got these lighter blues, darker blues, purple, sorry, four, and then all these kind of pinks, which I have sort of touched on a little bit here. Not very much, but a wee bit. I sort of spread those out because I was looking for missing red pieces, but yeah, so just the four left. And then that'll be this puzzle finished. I'm roughly around halfway through-ish, I think. So yeah, really, really, really fun. I'm liking this puzzle a lot.
there we have it all finished and let me just say to start off that I thoroughly enjoyed this puzzle. I, I, I do love a gradient puzzle just from the get-go. I like a gradient. I find them really relaxing to puzzle um, but I particularly like where they went with this gradient, how it's just a little bit different with all these lines coming out and I just really really enjoyed it. Overall I enjoyed my first treffle puzzling experience as well and really just to sort of summarize the pros and cons of the brand I'll start with the pros. I think the image quality was spot on. It was bright, vivid, vibrant. It, the finished puzzle looks just as lovely and vibrant as the box image and I really like that. I thought it was just superb image quality. Another pro for me personally is that the pieces have a woven finish to them which means that they feel lovely to put in uh, I mean I just really like that kind of a piece, that kind of texture on a piece so it was lovely to work with the pieces um, but also there was no glare at all from the lights coming off the pieces or anything like that so the pieces again get a big thumbs up from me. I also loved the variety of the shapes of the pieces even though the pieces were all the different standard shapes they were all accounted for what I did find was there seemed to be not that many of the the standard two ins two outs on opposite sides pieces they were there but usually with a puzzle there's perhaps more of those and then there's a good smattering of the other ones this one I felt I would go so far as to say that there were not that many of those pieces which is quite refreshing actually so I enjoyed that about it as well really good variety in the piece shape um, and another thing I loved about it was that um, sections held together really well so I was able to move them and put them in place wherever I had a section that was building up on its own I was able to pick it up and put it in place it wasn't crumbly at all really so that was another big pro for me and it actually did survive the pickup challenge pretty well as well um, as you will see here. So yeah lovely good high quality puzzle to do and to work with. Just to go over the cons which of which there are just a couple I obviously found a couple of bent pieces which I mentioned at the start um, which isn't great but you know there were just two or three so that's not something I'm going to quibble about these things happen with puzzles but I did find those and the second thing um, that I wasn't overly keen on was it's to do with the pieces but it was to do and mostly I really did like the pieces but I just felt like the prongs on the pieces there was no variety in the shapes of those. They were quite small and they were all just the same shape. You know, not like a Ravensburger where you perhaps get bigger ones or you get smaller ones or you get slightly wonky ones or off-center ones or ones with a little hook on them. They were just all pretty much the same, just little round prongs. And what that basically meant was that any piece pretty much fit anywhere easily with no resistance they just dropped into place because the shapes of the prongs were all pretty uniform and what can happen with that is that it can lead to some false fits now with this particular puzzle the the, the grid cut which meant that there weren't really any misaligned pieces and also the fact that there was a gradient and a textured image on this puzzle meant that I didn't have much of a problem with false fits but I did have a couple and I just think that the reason for that is because the shapes of these prongs the pieces just dropped in really easily and I do think in another puzzle where there's perhaps an image and there might be some solid color areas or solid textured areas I think that you know other truffle puzzles with pieces like this might potentially lead to some false fits but as I say I didn't have many on this puzzle but I did have a couple and I think that that's to do with that so I would have liked to have seen more variety in the shapes of the prongs of the pieces as much as there is in the shapes of the pieces themselves that would have been really great but as I say it wasn't a huge issue with this puzzle I managed to put it together fine and you know I very quickly discovered uh, where a piece wasn't right so it wasn't a huge issue but again it's just a minor minor niggle and that's it overall I really loved my first truffle puzzling experience I'm really looking forward to doing that cat one which is down there I need to find a spot on my shelf my shelf's getting pretty full actually I might need to have a clear out soon <laughs> um, 
But yeah, overall, I really, really did enjoy this. I'm looking forward to that cat puzzle. And I would recommend a truffle puzzle to anybody who hasn't tried one yet. It was, it was really, really good fun to put together. Okay, so that is it for that puzzle. There's just one more thing I want to say before I um, disappear. And that is, I want to tell you what is going to be the next puzzle on my puzzle table. So I will give you a clue. It has 10 sections and it is huge. <laughs> yes. I am going to dive into the next bag of um, the wildlife puzzle, the 33,600 piece puzzle, which is sitting there in the corner. I have the bag in front of me here. This is section four, going from left to right. It's the fourth section along from the left. And, and the image is this one here. I folded up the poster, but I will take a close up picture. Basically, we have, again, a lot of animals, but they're sort of spread around. It's not like there's a high contingency of ones just in the sky. We've got some butterflies as usual, We've got snakes up in the trees. We've got another, another cat at the bottom, although not as cat heavy, this section. There's another cat there standing on the rock. Uh, we've got giraffes this time. First time I've done any giraffes, some more flamingos. There's a bald eagle there flying across and of course flowers and some greenery but the greenery is getting a little less as we get further into the center of the puzzle and we're seeing more waterfalls and water areas so i'm hopeful that this section won't be too bad to build at all i was considering um doing the double section although when i asked about this when i sort of canvassed opinion about this most people said that they wanted to see a single section and as much as i would have loved to have done the next two sections and been halfway finished with this puzzle that would have been awesome i think i need a break from that the last the last time i did a double section i think i need a, a break between doing one double section and another i do think i will do another at some point not sure when yet but uh, but yeah for now Section four is going to be a section on its own and I can't wait to get started on this puzzle again. So I wanted to let you know that. It's very exciting. I am loving this puzzle. So this will be the next puzzle that I dive into and I'm gonna get another section done of this wildlife puzzle. So hope you are all excited and looking forward to that as I am. And that was everything. So I will now let you go. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe for more awesome puzzle content. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, happy puzzling. Bye.